Yeah, my, my university is trying to be zero waste by 2030. That's, it's all been said. <laughs> it's been really great to be able to in, learn ways to inspire others to gain passion about the same things that we have passion for. Hi, my name is Ojibwa Kadero, friends from Iwala, and I'm a senior environmental studies major from the University of Connecticut. I'm here because low-income communities of color are the first ones hit by disaster, but the last ones to be saved. I'm here because societal change starts in college classrooms. I'm here because the youngest individuals are being forced to inherit a problem of the world that older generations refuse to protect. But I'm also here because I have hope. And I know that you guys do too. We believe that in order to fight climate change, you have to make it personal. Good morning guys, it is Saturday the 5th of October, it's finally time for the Rare Summit. If you haven't seen on Instagram I have been talking about this and I am so excited to learn about behavioural science today, interview some really really cool people, activists, performers, academics, all that sort of stuff and show you everything. So get ready, we are going to have a great day. The first speaker to open the summit was college student Georgian Sanchez. She's from the Bronx in New York City and she's currently a freshman at Harvard College, intending to concentrate on astrophysics whilst also continuing her involvement in pageantry, poetry and peacemaking. Today she's performing her poem on climate denial. It's pretty amazing. Maybe the fact that our clean air is leaving our lungs constantly receiving the grey ourselves slowly receding into the black. Our blue waters we pretended to love, suffocated with plastic we disposed of, red turns to dove who flies away with no turning back. Back into time when I still saw seeing green and gold and green and blue. Seeing is believing, but I can only see one place at one time. Hurricanes in Houston, freezing people in Chicago, Bangladesh underwater, but I can only see one place at one time. The time is now, but when is now really? Three months ago, two weeks ahead, last year, yesterday. It was yesterday when I was anxiously waiting for a phone call from Rabbi Vicky down in San Juan. It was yesterday when I saw the beautiful island suffocate on the heavy gray fog. It was yesterday. The New York City skyline is flooded. Not with water this time, but empty promises that float to the top, sealing the air, and all you can do is sit and stare, stare at the world around you. She is crying out to you in the form of ashes and smoke. Smoke and ashes. Ashes and hope are all we have left. And all there is left to do is write. Searching for direction, all we can look to is each other. Look up and what do you see? What do you hear? If it isn't a colorless world, you do not fear. You aren't thinking hard enough, thinking far enough. Look inside yourself and ask if you're doing enough. If you acknowledge the climate crisis, you'll see that the climate price is too much for us to bear. And I'm not talking polar bears. All it takes is for you to care. Not about the, be the birds, the bees, or Florida's orange trees, but about people. Your friends, family, community, creating the change we need to see when I stop and breathe. All I can think is that this problem is so much bigger than me. But no one's asking you to plant a billion trees or develop renewable energies, but we all have to contribute to this international society. You see, big problems are made up of little ones, and solutions are the same way. They start in this room and end under the sunlight of the day. Thank you. During the break time, I decided to interview a few college students and ask them why they decided to come to the summit today. And to be honest, I was completely overwhelmed and inspired by these young creators and college students who basically are doing incredible things to help fight climate change, just individually, but also at the university. So I decided to interview them and share a bit with you. Um, well, 
The reason that we came today is we're from Temple, which is a really big city, and we're trying to find ways to bring more sustainable systems into the city and our local communities. But also try and gain a larger community and inspire our fellow students yeah. to mm -hmm. um, also solve yeah. climate change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's it's all been said. It's been really great to be able to in, learn ways to inspire others to gain passion about the same things that we have passion for. I feel like a lot of this, we learn about it in a very academic sense and it feels very hopeless and this conference is taking it and making it very personal. How can we make these changes and inspire other people around it? So it's a lot more of an active idea of how to impact climate. It's also been really great to learn how to refute the claim that climate change, that stopping climate change doesn't start at an individual level. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And also like bringing, like we're all involved with sustainable initiatives at our school, but really bringing other people into the equation and reaching outside of our sphere of influence can be really difficult. So um, learning how to do that is a really important tool. Hey guys, so I've been watching a few talks this morning which is so interesting and I want this vlog to be mainly about the people who are actually performing because I don't want to be kind of taking up space when I feel like this video should really be about all the amazing speakers who are talking about behavioral change and also Jordan Sanchez and Wawa who are performing um, and talking about the activism that they've been doing and they are so, so inspiring. I really hope you enjoyed seeing um, Jordan's poem and later you'll see Wawa's um, speech. Also, I'm excited to see Tim Ma. He talks about food waste and also Brett, who's the CEO of Rare. He had something really interesting to say. I think I probably put it before this clip, but yeah, I just wanted to share that this is gonna be mostly about them and like the speakers and stuff like that. But it's so, honestly guys, if you get to go to a conference or a summit or something, like I really, really highly recommend it because you learn so, so, so much and you understand that individual change and making climate change personal is actually, incredibly uh, useful and helpful for helping mitigate your own personal footprint, but also creating change much more widely. So never ever think that your individual efforts aren't actually making a big change because the behavioral science says that it does. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up and hopefully you guys will enjoy seeing the rest of the day. Yeah, I believe that the climate change is real and behavior, behavioral science is a very important way to tackle climate change and as I saw today in, in during the summit that how easy but how real it can be to get um, impact through behavioral science to get to make us make our world a better place yes um, yeah so what were you saying about your university is trying to be sustainable? Yeah, my sustain my university is trying to be zero waste by 2030, and so there's like a lot of debates going around with like the solar panels and things like that, and having people get on board with sustainability as a whole, but then also when we implant the when we put in the solar panels, getting people just like um, kind of understanding the bigger picture rather than the fact that it's not like aesthetically pleasing in the neighborhoods and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then we have a power plant on campus which makes it a little more difficult to compete with those prices so kind of having people understand the behavioral and like larger picture benefits rather than just um, the profit aspect. So um, I'm Ali, I'm from Gettysburg College. I'm here because I really care about envir like the environmental stuff. I think that it's a very, like climate change is a very big issue so I just I wanted to be here to learn more about it and just learn, I don't know, like learn how like professionals, you know, do other things and like what they're studying and what they're doing against climate change. Um, uh, I know a lot of people from my class that are coming here are, are specifically because they're ES majors. I'm not an ES major, I just really care about the environment. So yeah, I'm having a good time though. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ujuko Katero, friends call me Wawa, and I'm a senior environmental studies major from the University of Connecticut. And I'm here today because I am an environmental justice activist. And what a lot of people see is the work and the problem solving, but something that gets lost in translation is how we arrive at a place to make change, to create action. And I think a lot of that is coming into terms with the emotions that we have with climate change. Because climate change is not just a technical, jargon-filled concept. It's 
personal, it's emotional. And it's through working through that, through addressing that, that I believe that as a movement, we can come together, we can grieve together, and we can begin to hope together. And I think being able to address and validate our emotions, even the ones that we feel ashamed about, fear, grief, hopelessness, those aren't just dead end emotions. They're actually an entryway, an entryway into action and community and personal resilience. And that's what I want to bring here today. And I'm really excited to be here. So I just saw the talks by the university students Zach and Wawa about what they're doing on their university campus to create change and it's just really inspiring and I hope you can see some of the footage of it and get some inspiration especially if you are on a university campus and just to see that there is a possibility for you to make some change and to help kind of inspire your community around your university as well so it's just really inspiring and oh, I can't wait to go and, and learn some more things. <laughs> Hello. You know, one thing I've found by listening to these talks today at Rare is the, the interesting intersection of human behavior and climate change, specifically how social impacts play into people making choices, how social norms can be leveraged, how your in-group really impacts your decision making. It's really opened up my mind to potential research opportunities, just evaluating how people interact and observing how people interact to see how their decisions are, are revolving around climate change based on their in-group. Um, so yeah, I think when we're thinking about climate change and how we create political action and behavioral change, it's really important to think about our local elections. And specifically for me, I've gotten a lot more interested in Philadelphia politics, which is where I'm from. But I just really believe that if you vote people into your city council, your mayor elections, um, your state representatives, and even your governors that care about climate change, um, it can do a lot in the short term, rather as in the long term, you have to wait four years to elect a new, um, you know, big government official, federal government official that may or may not um, be following up on the values that they preach during their election. <laughs> a lot of community gardens and it happens a lot in cities where they have a lot of um, empty lots and there a lot of them have been turned into community gardens um, and the city of Philadelphia actually started an initiative that Temple Community Garden applied for where they would like equip you with um, more resources to make a bigger compost heap and they would help you with um, you know getting equipment to deal with it and enabling your garden um, so we actually got that grant to from the city to like bolster the success of our garden which is cool because the compost thing we're already doing with the bikes Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed seeing lots of stuff today and I'm going to put all the links for all the speakers down below and people's social handles and all of that fun stuff. So I really, really highly recommend you go and check these people out because they are so inspiring and the work they're doing is incredible. I also want to thank everyone who came and said hi to me, who follows me. I really, really appreciate it. And I had some awesome conversations, especially with you, Kate. Um, and Clarissa, of course. So thank you very, very, very much. I'm so excited to make this video and I just had such an inspiring day and honestly I'm I'm pumped, I'm motivated and I'm feeling really really creative and inspired for creating some kind of change. So I will see you guys very very soon.